Zionist Jewry is pushing for the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. Plans have been made, laws and blueprints drawn up, even the furniture is ready to go. But there's a problem. There's no priesthood. The Romans destroyed the records of the priesthood with the second temple in 70 AD, and all secondary records eventually disappeared. This was admitted by Maimonides in the 12th century. He wrote that when the rabbinic messiah comes, who the church knows will be the antichrist, he would verify, that is fabricate, the pedigrees of the priesthood. Every Jew is told that he's a Kohen, a priest descended from Aaron, but no Jew can prove it. When Ezra directed the building of the second temple, if a priest couldn't show his papers proving his ancestry from the tribe of Levi, he was thrown out of the temple. Today, no Jew, no matter how religious, no matter how famous, can prove his priesthood. No priesthood, no temple. It's bogus. Rabbi Chaim Richman of the Temple Institute peddles some more bogus. The Temple Institute is a very unique organization because it was founded with the sole purpose of doing as much as possible to raise the consciousness for the Jewish people and really for the whole world. It's seen by the Torah as the vehicle that brings about a certain spiritual reconciliation between all of mankind and God. And of course, every prophet of Israel tells us that the time will come when the temple will again be rebuilt. No way. The prophets foretold the building of the second temple, not a third. The prophet Jeremiah proclaimed that at the coming of the new covenant, which we are now under, the temple would be no more and not needed. That's in Jeremiah chapter 3. And Ezekiel's temple is obviously figurative for the church, since the outside wall's perimeter is smaller than the temple itself. Rabbi Richmond makes another laughable claim. Not only does he tout the glories of the chosen people, he tells us that the rebuilt temple would actually be a blessing for the entire world. You know, we're called a, um, a kingdom of priests and a holy people, the chosen people. Now, not everyone is comfortable with that appellation. I woke up one morning and there it was. I didn't fill out a form. It doesn't mean that we're the best pediatricians and Wall Street brokers and film producers. We happen to be that also, but that might be a coincidence. This is what we're promised when the Holy Temple is built, that it will once again become the focal point of the spiritual energy of mankind. How could a bunch of dead lambs with their throats slit by a people with a superiority complex be a blessing for the world? It would be more like stink and rot, not spiritual energy. But behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, declared St. John the Baptist. The real Messiah has come, the Lord Jesus Christ. And with him, the new priesthood after the order of Melchizedek has been established in the church, the Israel of God. We don't need some fraudulent, stinking, priestless temple that God himself destroyed. We have the true temple, the church. That's all we need for the salvation of the world. Chosen ones, i.e. the Jewish people, believe that they are so chosen that they have the right to use every other human being on this planet however they can be used to their perceived benefit and that each one of us is nothing more than dogs and cattle to be used and slaughtered and lied to and exploited in every which way possible because God so ordained that the Jewish people have the right to do so as the chosen ones. It gives credence to that whole belief that these people are the most vile and disgusting psychopathic criminals who are deluded with the most serious delusions of grandeur who believe that they can get away with everything because again God said they were chosen to do so how is it possible for us to even begin to explain how 
the people of Palestine have been treated for decade after decade unless we understand that in the eyes of the power structure within Israel that the Palestinians are not in fact people, that they are dogs, that they don't even exist to even think that they are worth anything in the eyes of this psychopathic Jewish supremacist ideology is to insult yourself because God said that you are chosen and everything else is irrelevant. That would explain very well what the Israelis are doing yet again. And I don't use props in my, in my uh, whole presentation ever, but this little girl here is a reflection of our crimes. Our crimes against the people of Palestine in the Western world because we sit here and we do nothing while the Israelis continue to murder little baby girls like this one who used to be a beautiful little baby girl and who now looks like a piece of charcoal sitting in a cold iron box in Palestine right now. That is what we do, sit by and do nothing while the Israelis continue and murder and rampage at will. Is when you have such an evil and violent and disgusting entity such as the Israeli machine, this monster, that simply murders at will, backed by the United States, importantly, that the only thing good that can come out of this rampaging monster is that its own momentum works against it. That the will of the people, the slumbering people of the world that have sat by, and I include myself in this not having done enough in my opinion, there is more that I could have done and that we as people could have done. But if anything, this rampaging, terrorizing entity that is known as Israel if anything good can come out of it is that enough of us finally become so ashamed, disgusted, and engaged that we do what we're fully capable of doing. And ultimately what that means is that our criminal governments, complicit governments, I, can't, I cannot even begin to come back to the European nations and America enough. Nothing Israel does could be done without the criminal complicity of the European Union and especially Britain and the United States, especially America. And stop talking about Mitt Romney or Barack Obama and the lesser of two evils. Look at Barack Obama. Full support. Full support for the slaughter of little girls, little boys, and innocent people. Full support from the so-called President of the United States, the democratically elected supposedly President of the United States gives full support for this slaughter. Until we as people do everything that we're capable of doing, this madness will continue. I don't put any stock in the United Nations, if you ask me about that. The United Nations is a criminal entity as well. In fact, the formation of Israel is on the back of the United Nations partition plan, which allocated the majority of the land to less than 15% of the population. That is the origin of this problem, so why would we expect the UN to do anything honorable?